thanks for joining us today. And uh, we're going to have a look at our Schecter PT Fastback that we recently acquired and reviewed on the channel. Uh, during that review, we discovered that the neck pickup wiring was iffy somewhere and failing, and therefore we couldn't we couldn't actually review it properly. <laughs> if you consider our reviews to be proper in the first place, I suppose. Uh, sadly, it's not that uncommon with new guitars to, to find uh, teething issues such as that. Um, normally, it's quite an easy fix, and we certainly hope so, because nobody likes to get a new guitar and then have to send it off to the luthier or back to the shop straight away. So generally, we would get our screwdriver and soldering iron out and um, see if we can fix it. Um, so, should just be a loose wire somewhere. We won't know until we take it to pieces. Um, this particular guitar, as you will see, it's got a big old scratch plate on the front, no access via the back. So, what we unfortunately, what we have to do with this is take the strings off and take the whole of the scratch plate off to get to the pots. Um, I think this is the culprit, if I remember rightly. Um, what we should discover is we should or well, hopefully we'll be able to see there's a loose wire somewhere and hopefully we'll be able to repair it um so let's uh, let's dig in and, and and see where we're at eh? so i think these look like they screw straight to the body so there's very little adjustment on these that's interesting to discover See if it's loose. Let's see where that gets us to. Yeah. So I've got to flip that. If you're fussy about scratching your guitar, which I probably should be. Um, I mean, people pay a fortune for scratches on their guitars, so, you know, why not do it yourself? That's what I'm advocating here. Um, what I'll do, because it might infuriate some people if I don't, is just go and get something to protect the finish of the guitar. Right, there you go. Guitar nicely protected. Jesus Christ. Okay, so we can see what, we, what we're dealing with here. Let's loosen off some cables. They all seem to be gathered up. So I'm just gonna Let's just touch the wires and see if there's one that's obviously oh, loose. Oh, good, you're still here. I thought I'd just jump in at this point because I it was getting a little bit dull. So maybe we can move things along a bit. So what happens here is I poke around for quite a while with a, a pointy thing to try and find some loose wires, uh, but I don't find any. So I wiggle some more, poke around a little bit. There's nothing obvious that's that's broken, disconnected, or shorting out so I'm a little bit stumped because I thought that was a slam dunk but there you go shit I can't see anything wrong which is quite annoying I don't find any loose wires so I don't really know what to do at this point so I go home and have a sleep on it so next day I come in and I've had a bit of a brainwave. I dug out some switch cleaner that I bought from Maplin many years ago when they were still on the high street. This is a bit old. As you can see, Maplin, they closed ages ago. 
years ago. Crikey. Shame. It's getting on a little bit and the aerosol has disappeared, but if you press it, it does drip out quite nicely. So uh, I drip some contact cleaner onto all the switches and all the, the push-pull tone knobs and wiggle them around quite a bit just to let it soak in. And I figure, well, that may do the trick. Um, so I put it all back together. At this point, I don't know if it's worked or not. Uh, it's all trial and error, so let's find out. So there you go, appears to be working now. More by luck than anything else, I suspect. Uh, I'm not sure what anyone's learnt from that, but it has been fun making it, and hopefully you've enjoyed watching it. See you again, bye.